Hi, in this video I'll try to help you take the first steps into solid modeling, also known as 3D CAD, as quickly as possible. This tutorial is meant for people who have no experience in 3D CAD at all, as I'm going to be explaining the core concepts of solid modeling. I will be using FreeCAD as an example later on in the video, but the core concepts apply to almost all solid modeling software. Solid modeling, as its name implies, deals with solid bodies. A solid body in 3D CAD terms is a shape that is completely watertight, meaning it has volume and in a way mass. Solid models can be used for simulation, easy 3D printing, CNC machining and other types of manufacturing. It is the main modeling type used in engineering. Solid modeling is also considered non-destructive parametric modeling which means that any changes done to the model can be easily undone or modified. In contrast, polymodeling, for example done in Blender, 3ds Max, Cinema 4D, Maya, etc. mainly deals with meshes. Meshes usually are shells or sometimes called surfaces. Meshes are hollow and they have an infinitely thin shell that has no volume. Polymodeling is considered destructive and is very rarely used in engineering. Solid modeling has a model structure that is heavily based on real life. In most 3D CAD software, every part starts with a sketch. Sketches are used to make features. A set of features make a body or a part. A set of parts is an assembly. Going from the top down, an assembly is made of parts. Parts are made of many features and some of the features are based on sketches. Let's break that down. A sketch is a 2D drawing that is used as a base for a feature or a body. For example, a square is a base for a cube. A circle is a base for a cylinder. To make a good sketch, you need to add dimensions and constraints that will make your design parametric, meaning that you can also go back to the initial sketch and modify it and see your modification cascade further down your model. A feature is something that is made by using different solid modeling tools. A feature can be a pad, also known as an extrusion, a fillet, a chamfer, pocket, so on and so forth. A feature is something that can be selected in the model tree. A body or a part is usually made of many features. Part feature tools do not work on meshes or surfaces, also known as not watertight bodies. Now a body or a part is a digital piece of matter. It has volume, it can be moved or used in an assembly. It can be used for simulation or manufacturing. If a chess set is an assembly, a part is one chess piece. If we take a solid part and cut it in half, it has to produce a flat plane where the cut occurred. Otherwise the model is hollow and is not a solid part. An assembly is a collection of parts, usually constrained together to produce a mechanism. Assemblies are great for simulating and checking whether a mechanism works. Many 3D CAD software produce proprietary assemblies. Usually an assembly made in one piece of software will not get recognized by another, meaning that the constraints will have to be reapplied. Here's a quick example. We're going to start with a sketch and end up with an assembly. To begin, let's go to assembly workbench and create a new assembly. We've created an empty assembly. Let's move back to part design and create a new body. We can grab that body and drag it over to parts. Now we have an empty body in our parts folder. Activate the body by double clicking on it and create a new sketch. We're going to create a sketch on the XY plane, which is also called the top plane. I'm going to create a rectangle. You will notice that I am able to move the rectangle freely by simply clicking and dragging. 
That means that the rectangle is not constrained to our origin. The sketch is unconstrained. We'll start adding a couple of dimensions. I want this to be 50 millimeters tall. And 40 millimeters wide. Now we have a rectangle that is able to keep its form, but it's still moving freely on our reference plane. So what we want to do now is constrain that rectangle using our reference plane. We have a center dot, X axis and Y axis. I want the rectangle to be 20 millimeters away from the center point. Now I can only move the rectangle in one dimension. As you can see, the colors changed, which means the rectangle is fully constrained. I am no longer able to move it by just clicking and dragging. Fully constrained sketches are really good practice, as it means that we keep the parametricity of the drawing, of the part, of the assembly throughout our workflow. We can now close the sketch. Now I'm going to create our first feature, Add. I'm going to add it by 20 millimeters. Okay. Here we have our first feature. Now I want to further develop this part to make a hole in the center. I will select the face I want to create a new sketch on and click the new sketch button. We'll draw a circle in the center. and add the radius constraint. I want it to be 10 millimeters in radius. I'm going to leave the sketch again. I'm going to pocket it. I can input a number to specify the depth of the pocket or I can just select through all. Okay, now we have our second feature that is this pocket. I'm going to rename the first body we made and I'm going to call it base. Now I want to create a second part in our assembly. I'll rename it to shaft and then move it to parts folder. I'm going to create a new sketch, select the same XY plane and draw a circle in the center. I'm going to give it a radius of 9 and I'm going to close the sketch. Now I'm going to select our sketch and pad it again. I want this to be 50 millimeters tall. Okay. Now we have two parts in our assembly, the base and the shaft. While it might look nice and tidy, but these parts are not assembled together. They're in an assembly, but they're not assembled. We switch to assembly workbench. I'll select the shaft and I'll enable the move tool. I am able to move the shaft wherever I want. And as you can see, our parts are misaligned. Luckily, we can continue to develop our parts and assemble them later. Let's get back to part design. I'm going to create a new sketch on the top of the cylinder. I'm going to include its geometry into my sketch and I'm going to create a circle on the edge of it. Now I want to constrain the circle to the y-axis 
of this part. I'm going to close our sketch and simply pocket this. Okay. It's good practice to keep sketches as simple as possible and rely on features rather than complex sketches. Now we can try and assemble these parts. First of all, I want to ground this base so it doesn't move while we assemble our parts. To do that, I'll select the bottom face and create a lock on strain. Secondly, I want to fit the cylinder in this hole. So I'll select the outer face of it and the hole in our base. And use the axial constraint. This moved the part in its intended location. However, if we try to move the part, we can still move it up and down, but we are not able to move it side to side. We are still free to rotate the part around its axis. So now we want to align the bottom of the shaft to the bottom of the base. I'm going to select the bottom face of the cylinder and the bottom of our base. I'm going to use the plane alignment tool. Now we are no longer able to move the part up and down, side to side, we're only able to rotate it. And there we have it, that's our assembly. To conclude, an assembly is composed of constraints and parts. We've created three constraints. We've locked the base to the uh, ground. We've created an axial constraint, so the cylinder is always aligned with the hole. And we made a plane constraint to align our two parts on a single face. Now, in our parts folder, we will find the base and the shaft. The base contains two features, which is our initial pad and the pocket. The shaft contains the original pad and the pocket. We can go back to the base object and edit our initial sketch. We can make the base 50 millimeters wide instead of 40 and make the outer edge 25 millimeters away from the center. We can close that and immediately see that our shape has been updated, but everything else was kept in place. These are the basics of solid modeling or 3D CAD. That's it for today. Hope to see you soon and goodbye.